Okay, so this is a video just of how to add a, a user's extension in FreePBX. Um, obviously, FreePBX is the GUI that sits on top of the Asterix VoIP system. I'm uh, just going to put my password in here. So this is the main default GUI. So depending on how many of these module admins you, you pull in, um, depends on what you're going to see here, but it's always the same. It's applications extension, generic SIP device. There is sort of more options here, but this is just your standard SIP device. Uh, if you want to see the existing extensions, you can check here, but I'm just going to call this one, 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 one display name. You can call it Joe blogs, SID name, alias. that's not important. Outbound SID. None of this is important. This outbound seed can be, uh, will be important if you want to show a, a caller ID. Uh, DID description, none of this is important. So your secret passcode, I'm just going to put 1234. Um, but this is obviously something that people can brute force hacks. If someone knows an extension, this actually creates like a Linux based username. Um, so this needs to be fairly complex password, ideally. Um, that can all be left as default. So your NAT, so obviously network address translation, if you're having, if it's a hosted PBX, I, this one is just behind a, a, an internet IP address, it isn't part of a lockdown network, then you don't need NAT. Um, but effectively, if you, uh, if this is going to be like a hosted PBX, then you will use NAT. Um, you can create the default user here, but we won't do that. Um, you can also configure sort of if you want voicemail, um, call recording, all of this good stuff. But that is pretty much as easy as it gets. You create the username, uh, create the user extension, give it a display name, um, make sure that there's a password, make sure that NAT's enabled, select anything you need from a voicemail um, or recording perspective, um, and then you pretty much hit submit. Uh, there we go, it's just telling me that your secret must be a certain amount of characters, 5, 6, and we'll call it, put some letters in there as well, just in case, so we'll submit that, apply config, this is what we do in FreePBX, just really writes everything to the, to the config files, and as you can see, our SIP user has been created effectively, it is as easy as that. Here, in terms of you can actually give a network subnet um, and a network location, uh, i.e. more lockdown security. Um, if you've got users that are working from a certain location, always coming from the same IP address, that's obviously useful. Um, here you can change the port number. It's 5060 is the default uh, VoIP port, but effectively uh, people do have tools to try and hack on that port, so some people do um, change the port. So that's that piece. The only other thing that's probably worth showing you is that if you want an inbound number to ring this extension, you would, here's one that we've prepared earlier, you would effectively select the number that's part of your SIP trunk and then you literally just say right so this number that we've got highlighted here what do we want to do with that number if we want it to there's, we go straight to call recording can it be a conference number it's really extensions that we want it to do, and then you select the extension that you want that to go to effectively so i just take a number that's on my sip trunk and i'll say look i want it's it, this extension number to be given to this internal extension um so currently if i ring with my new uh, extension that we've just created which is 1111 if I ring with that, what is the outbound number going to be? We can check that in the outbound routes. So effectively, I won't scroll down because I think it'd be password, but effectively, um, it's basically saying that this number is my actually, no, that was to create a new one. Click on the actual route itself. So this is the outbound route number. So this is what every number will dial out of. And as you can see that we set up an extension route, anything that's zero, starts with zero, 01268, 01277, will actually use this outbound number, which is configured as part of your SIP trunking. Uh, and I'll just show you that very, very quickly if it's interesting. Um, uh, where are we inbound trunks? There we go.
So these are just internet trunks that you just pick up. I won't click on it because it will show you my password. You go to a SIP provider and they give you config and then that pretty much locks your VoIP environment to a SIP, uh, a SIP trunk. So that's pretty much it from, from this one.